Hi, I'm Steve Shankin, visiting for the day, talking about my eight books. And then uh, we're going to do gonna get some extra a little extra book show book. here now. <laughs> but I don't know what the questions are, so, but I'm ready. Okay. I think I'm ready. Okay. Uh, my first question is, what is your favorite historical topic in time? Mm-hmm. Favorite historical time? If I had to pick a one time, and I, and I really don't want to, but I will since you asked. Um, I would say Cold War. World War II, too, but also into the Cold War, which is something that I feel a little bit more connected to just because I was alive and toward the end of it, Yeah. which, of course, makes it feel more real, like that moment in time, which I'm not sure that, that, that your generation, you know about it, but that feeling of thinking there's going to be a nuclear war any day, and uh, there's something super intense about that, and it makes for, if you like spy stories, which I do. That's like the heart, that's the golden age of spies. Okay. Um, what are a couple of surprising historical stories that you know of but you haven't written about yet? Yes, yes, yes. There's so many. I keep notebooks that, and a computer of ideas that I may or may not ever use. Uh, there was one that I was, that I actually sold as an idea because it was so, I thought so good and then I just, it was a dead end. I couldn't find out enough about it. It was about it's kind of a true crime caper kind of story about these, going way back to the gold rush era, these guys who claimed that they found a diamond mine in the Rocky Mountains. And this was a time when people were looking for gold and silver all over the West and finding it. So these guys said, well, take it one step further. We'll find a diamond mine and sell shares of it, except it didn't actually mm-hmm. exist. And it was a brilliant scam because they actually went out and created a mine where they, they would buy diamonds and put them in the yeah. soil, you know, to trick yeah. people. And it was a great scam story, but I just, I couldn't find out enough about it. Um, and those are the kinds of things that I just kind of keep yeah. a hold of and say, can I use something like that one day? I hope so. I'm not sure. So I have a lot of that. I, if you don't mind me sharing, I have an interesting one because we just did a project on the Eiffel Tower. There was a con artist that tried to sell the Eiffel Tower twice and successfully did it. Uh, to who? I have no idea, but he's I successful. Love, uh, yeah, so, so we're on the same page then because scam stories. That's what I loved about it was these guys. They, it was like a game of poker where they were really hung in there and were selling it. They could have kind of folded and gotten the money out, but they said, "No, we're going to play it. Go all in," as they say, and really try to trick mining engineers, government agents, and they did, they did it. It was. Scam. You could time travel to one time in the past, and you could either change an event or be a part of an event. What time would you go to, and what event would you want to be a part of, or stop, or change? Oh, it's, almost, it's almost limitless when you open it up that way. In terms of being a part of it, I always... Well, I'm, I'm totally obsessed with Benedict Arnold and his, the, the, his role in the American Revolution. And that goes way back before Hamilton was cool. Uh, because now it's sort of cool, you know, the revolution. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I felt very nerdy about it when I, in a good way, when I got into Benedict mm-hmm. Arnold, who is, of course, the traitor. He's still sort of synonymous with traitor. Uh, but if you like a villain story, a bad boy story, come on, it's the best one. It's the best one ever. And so, <clears throat> but he also did great things. So he was a great American general. He led these incredible victories and battle and helped. And he really helped win the war, even though he betrayed yeah. our side later on. So I would like to talk him out of that, basically, if I could, because I feel like he just felt people just didn't love him. You know, he had that personality thing where he just felt, why don't people love me more? And we could psychoanalyze his childhood if we yeah. wanted to, because it was pretty messed up um, and sad. But... <clears throat> I, think, I still think that if he had the right friend at the right time, yeah. saying, you know, we th- just, just just hang in there, man. People are going to make name states after you. They're gonna, you're going to be so cool. And it's just, just, just don't panic, you know. I would like to try to. Your writing style, the narrative nonfiction, oh, no. amazing, by the way. How did you discover that originally? Really from, <clears throat> from reading. I'm not just saying that because because we're in the library and yeah. over there, but no, it's true. But but from reading, not to learn, but just reading, mm-hmm. say, a spy novel. Yeah. Or uh, it could be nonfiction, but a really exciting narrative mm-hmm. nonfiction story. 
And I thought, well, this doesn't really, this isn't really how we teach history. Adults don't pick up boring books and say, mm, let me learn about this. They just don't do that. Yeah. They expect books to be, well, they're not always exciting in the sense that they're happy and feel mm -hmm. good, but they're compelling, page-turning. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that there was a, an opportunity to do that mm -hmm. with young adult books, too. Yeah. And so that's, that was my inspiration. Which book took you the longest to write? Mm -hmm. Definitely the Benedict Arnold uh, book. It's called The Notorious Benedict Arnold. And of my narrative, narrative nonfiction books, it took the longest because, well, number one, I didn't know what I was doing yeah. or how to write a book. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of doing it on my own. Yeah. And we would take, I say we because I, I uh, incredibly, my wife Rachel, before we even got married, uh, agreed to go with me on some of these Benedict Arnold road trips that we would do. We lived, we were living in Brooklyn then, and we would just take the car out and drive through New England and New York and, and check out sites. And she couldn't have cared less about Benedict Arnold, but she thought it was kind of she's she's into history, and she just thought it would be it's just a fun excuse to go to some out of the way place and see see something. And we ended up traveling all through New England and up through Canada and to Quebec, which is very important in the story. And. So that was going on for years. Mm -hmm. And I was just taking notes, saying, well, I'm going to do something with this. And I don't know, is it going to be a graphic yeah. novel? Is it going to be a screenplay? I had no idea. And then I got into the historical, the idea of writing historical nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this would be a perfect fit. And, and I was just lucky that my, my yeah. publisher agreed, all right, yeah, try that as a book. So the, from the beginning to, to where the book existed must have been 10 years. Which book was your favorite to research and write? Hmm. Well, probably Bomb in the sense of, again, going back to, to the inspiration of spy thrillers. It's just mm -hmm. something that I love to read. Yeah. And they're usually fiction. They don't, it doesn't have to be, but the cla if you think of the classic, going back to, again, Cold War, James mm -hmm. Bond, John le Carré novels. Uh, I just love that stuff. And so I, I was inspired by the idea of, can I do something like that? But it's nonfiction. Well, yeah, you can if, as long as the story is good enough. Yeah. And and so since most of that research was into spying and and some science and some kind of secret agent commando raid type stuff, which was also really interesting to learn about, I would say. And again, not a hat. Is it a, is it a feel good story? Not at all. But in terms of the research being interesting, yeah. And which book is your favorite now that it's published and out into the world? That's tough. I mean, the most recent one, it is like it's, it's declaring which of your kids you like best, which you're not yeah. supposed to do. But I might say Undefeated, which is my, mm -hmm. it's my most recent one. It's, it's, it's not brand new anymore, but it still feels new. And it's about Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indian School mm -hmm. football team. And I always wanted to do a sports story because I just, just wanted to. And I thought, I love the way... Uh, those kind of those kind of books or movies can create you just get so into it, especially mm -hmm. if you don't know how yeah. it turns out. So many things stacked against them and yet they became the best team in the country mm -hmm. against so many odds. And, and so as you're watching the game and I really was that way when I'm researching because I didn't know the specifics of when they went to Harvard that year, did they win or lose? I don't know. And so it was so exciting to to research and to tell to try and recreate those mm -hmm. games. I saw on your website about the More Perfect Union oh, yeah, screenplay the movie, yeah. movie. Would you ever consider making that into a novel? I don't know. The basic... <clears throat> so that was a movie that my brother and mm -hmm. I made in our early 20s, and it was a total flop. And the basic premise is a comedy about this young group of guys who were our age at the time who decide to form their own country and yeah. they rented a house. And, of course, nobody cares. <laughs> and so they try to get attention to this country that they've formed that nobody cares about. So it's kind of, I think it's a good premise for a comedy. Uh, so, yeah, there could be something, be, partly because it feels like unfinished business, because mm -hmm. it couldn't really work, you know, <laughs> yeah. and the idea was good, and we thought maybe we could try to repackage it as, a, as like, a sitcom or something. I think if technology were different, this was, now we're going back to the mid-1990s, so pre-cell phones or anything like that. Or there were, no, there really weren't digital video cameras yet um, that, that we could afford or use. Um, we might do that. Like, we, why not just do some short episodes and put them mm -hmm. on YouTube or something? Yeah. 
I think we would have done that. I don't know about a novel, but but re retake re reusing the idea. Mm -hmm. We definitely wanted to. We were we, we, we it took us a long time to admit that it wasn't yeah. going to work. <laughs> going along with that, what people from history would you pick to form that perfect union with? Oh yeah, that's tough. See, there's certain guys like like I always go back to Benedict Arnold, like he's I think he'd be very annoying to, to hang out with, but he, you definitely want him on your side. Yeah. And then you want like a, an Abraham Lincoln type mm -hmm. to be for, for the brains. And um, you want cool people too, like Amelia Earhart, who can do daring yeah. things, uh, spies. You need some spies, action heroes. Athletes would be really good. Bring in like. Um, Jackie Robinson or something. You want just a mix of, mm -hmm. of different skills, but that, it's a good question because I think about that when, when you write something, yeah. if it's about someone like Jim Thorpe, this incredible athlete, you're basically, I don't know if you get to know him, but you feel like you do. Yeah. You feel like you're living in a way with them for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so Jim Thorpe would be, yeah, I mean, bring, would bring a skill set. The guy could do anything. He was the best athlete in the world in his time played every sport. So yeah, that would help somehow. I don't know what he would do, but it would so He could lift boxes, oh, totally, probably. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a huge help. Do you mainly read nonfiction, or do you read novels? What? That's like half and half for me. Um, but, but most of the nonfiction that I read is, is at work, yeah. which means just sitting in my room and, uh, and mm -hmm. reading in my office and reading, taking notes. And then I'll, I'll pick up an unfiction book for fun, too, just because I think they're really good. But probably more so in my own reading, I'll read, again, spy or detective fiction. Mm -hmm. I particularly love crime novels that take place in other countries, mm -hmm. whether it's Norway, Japan, I'm reading one in Italy right now, where it really feels like you're going to that place and living... Uh, investigating the crime with the detectives. It's a great way to feel like you're in another place. Yeah. That along with, and I still love really comics and graphic novels too, so a mix of all of those. Yeah. And going along with that, do you ever find it hard to read historical fiction because of inaccuracy to history or putting <coughs> fictional characters in a real event? No, I, I'm fine with it. I think if it's done well, I think it's it's perfectly fine, and I, I and I think you're you're allowed to take those kind of liberties, mm -hmm. as long as you're as long as you're not claiming that it's nonfiction. What? This is another people from history question. Yeah. What five people from history would you pick to run a high stakes uh, heist with? Oh yeah, I don't want to. I mean, you want to bring in a lot of the same people. Do you have it? Do you have an answer to that? I Let's come up with a list together. Oh, we'll both nominate somebody. I get all right. I got. I mean, I think Benedict Arnold would be great for that because yeah. he obviously doesn't have a lot, a strong moral compass. So he'd go along with it. But he has the oh, yeah. skills. You know, he's very, very bold, very fearless. You, I feel like you almost wouldn't want Abraham Lincoln. I know because he can't lie about anything. I know, and he would tell you why it was wrong. Yeah, and yeah I you don't have to have morally see great people. I know. A lot of people in the Revolution time. I was just I, like, I was. I've been researching early uh, women pilots. Mm -hmm. So Amelia Earhart is the one everyone thinks of. Yeah. I don't know if she'd go along with the heist, but there were some mm -hmm. other, some of her contemporaries who would, and they would, this was during the Prohibition years, mm -hmm. and there was this really cool pilot named Pancho Barnes, who people should know about if they don't, which they probably don't, but they should. And, and one of the things she would do would be to fly to Mexico. If she needed money, she could fly to Mexico and uh, smuggle liquor <laughs> to the United States. And she was, Totally fine with it. So that's a great skill set because you've got a pilot, mm -hmm. someone who's totally fearless. Definitely want her on, on board. Okay. And then the last thing I have is a little game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're Abigail Adams, Pirates of the Caribbean, and <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, pro wrestler. Yes. Um, they obviously go out of their place in history and find a new career that yes. they want to do. So I have a couple to pull out and ask you what you oh, think yeah, of yeah, yeah. Okay. So you take a person from history. I love doing this with classes, too. Yeah. And uh, you just take a person you think is interesting and then send them somewhere. 
Rita Kahlo. That's so. That's interesting because you want to send someone somewhere kind of unexpected. Even the mm -hmm. idea kind of makes you laugh. Hopefully, yeah. like Abigail Adams as a pirate. <laughs> that's kind of. But there's also but there's also a logic to it because mm -hmm. she was kind of a pioneer in terms of talking about women's rights. Yeah. And there were women pirates. Mm -hmm. So there's that connection. So Frida, if you're talking about a a painter who was daring in her way in terms of the art world, would she, you wouldn't want to just make her an art teacher or something. That's too obvious, right? <laughs> Let's see. I already have astronauts. And I'm talking about some of the ideas that I've already written, like cowboys. Do you think I could cowboy? Um, I don't know, do you have, do you have something? An athlete, would that be good? I want to do an athlete one. I want to have, um, I want to do one of these books where someone escapes from Alcatraz. Oh, that would be awesome. Could she do that? Yeah. How would her painting skills help her escape? We could come up with something. She could say that she was just painting to cover a hole in the wall. Right, she, she could paint, she could, she could make a hole in the wall and say it was a painting. Yeah. Could that work? <laughs> Or paint something over a hole in the wall. There's, there's something there. There's, there's a good idea there. All right, there, there's potential. Let's take another. I don't want to pick the same one. Joan of Arc. I like the idea of people switching, um, switching roles too. So she, and the other, is kind of the flip side is more of the action hero type. <laughs> Who she could do something, but still use the skills, but in a surprising way. Could she be um, the school principal? <laughs> He's so funny. Wouldn't that be great if you just came in one day? And she, what would she have you do? I mean, it might be intense. Yeah, she listened to the voices in her head. That's the beauty of it. You can just kind of use it as I feel like off. then the kid that doesn't get in trouble for the crap that they do would then get in trouble. Yeah, I don't think she would. Old. It'd be really easy on you guys, but it wouldn't be boring. No. So that's good. Yeah. All right, let me try another. That's a good idea. Alala. These are tough ones. I, You're picking out all the tough ones there, like. Yeah, some might be more obvious, but she's, I mean, she's super cool. I, 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 and I've had this come up with this issue, like I. I've thought of people who I said, oh, like Harriet Tubman, that should be someone who deserves to be mm -hmm. featured, but what could she do that's, that feels right and yeah. respectful, you know? Yeah. Well, all of kind of fun forms falls into that category. For someone like Harriet Tubman, I think she would make a really good private detective, like a private eye kind of story. Yeah. Well, I could do that. That's tough. Do you have, a, do you have, you have one for that? <laughs> <You don't. laughs> But she's, her whole attitude is you could do anything, so mm -hmm. she could go to Mars, maybe. I think she should go to Mars. Interesting. <laughs> Why not? Interesting. Yeah. All right. This is going to be an easy one. Al Capone. Speaking of Al see, yeah. Alcatraz. Could, and this, he could be in the Alcatraz one. Because mm -hmm. he was actually there. Which I like that, I like combining real history with preposterous, made up things. Yeah. So I think I would put him in with the Frida Escape from Alcatraz mm -hmm. story. What would he... Um, yeah, let's give him something good to do. Would he be on her side? I don't think so. Because do we really want him to escape from Alcatraz? <laughs> <laughs> so much. Yeah, maybe he would be like the bad guy in the story. That would be good. It would be interesting to see him also as like a new age criminal with right. technology. Could he figure out too. a way to use the web or it, yeah, the modern times to, to pull off some kind of caper? That's good. Okay. I think thank that's you. all the time we have. <laughs> great. So thank you so much thank for you. doing this. Pleasure.